North Carolina is in play, especially after the debate. Vice President Harris and Trump are essentially tied in polls, which is huge because a Democratic nominee for president has only won North Carolina twice since 1968. Trump and his team know this, and RFK just won a lawsuit in North Carolina that is going to disenfranchise voters there and manage to take his name off the ballot in an attempt to help Trump. My name is Dina Dahl for Midas Touch Network. Let's break this down. So what's happening exactly with RFK and why is it happening? Now, RFK sued in Michigan, Wisconsin, and North Carolina to take his name off the ballot because polls show that him being on the ballot helps Vice President Harris and hurts Trump. So after he decided to withdraw from the race and endorse Trump, he wanted to selectively take his names off of the ballots in certain swing states that would help Trump. Not in all the states, just in the Michigan, Wisconsin, and North Carolina. So he basically went from filing all these lawsuits to get on the ballot to filing all these lawsuits to get off the ballot. Now, Michigan Supreme Court, state Supreme Court, denied his request to take him off the ballot. He's filing a federal lawsuit now in an attempt to take his name off the ballot. But in North Carolina, the Republican elected state Supreme Court allowed his name to be removed from the ballot in violation of state and federal law. Now, to understand a little bit more how the Supreme Court there in North Carolina allow this to happen, let's take a look at this clip. Project 2025 really is, it's not a threat to democracy, it's a threat to bureaucracy. It's, it's putting the American, we the people, back into our government. Right now we have a permanent government in Washington, and this is the essence of a call to people to come serve in Washington. It's Kennedy-esque, it's really, and that's what's so exciting to see like RFK Jr. and the rest joining the heritage, joining the, uh, Trump fold is that that this is a coming together for our country. So the architect of Project 2025 made it slip there, show that really the Heritage Foundation is essentially the Trump ticket. And the Heritage Foundation, not only are they putting forward this really scary Project 2025, which will completely gut the laws that we have just relied on in an everyday basis with the Department of Education and the EPA with clean air and clean water, things that we just take for granted in our everyday lives. They want to replace those employees to those that won't follow the law. It's on their website. This is what they're planning on doing. But the Heritage Foundation didn't just start now and their plans to remake the government. Back when Trump was first elected in 2016, their plan was to remake the judiciary. And they put forward and vetted all of these ultra conservative judges that they wanted Trump to appoint. And it's true, when he got into office, he appointed judges that you know, were seen even by the um, American Bar Association as unqualified, but they had his, the Heritage Foundation's ultra conservative philosophical views. And so they were appointed by Trump in this unprecedented number. And so this is what, what is playing out right now in the North Carolina State Supreme Court. These judges that ruled to allow the violation of state and federal law to have his name removed from the ballot are elected judges. These aren't lifetime judges. They have elected judges. And the Heritage Foundation, that's their job, is to elect judges. So if you don't think this was a wink, wink, nod, nod to the Heritage Foundation who pours money into judicial elections, well, then I may have something else to sell you. But let's talk about actually what the state and violation of the federal and state laws are, why this opinion is so dangerous to the, the voters in North Carolina and how it disenfranchises them. In North Carolina, three million ballots were already printed. Out of those ballots, there was 2,348 slightly different ballot styles. This is how complex the situation was there in North Carolina. The ballots were already printed. There was a deadline that allowed 
if you were a candidate and you were going to withdraw and you wanted to withdraw from the ballot, you had a deadline to tell the election officials there in North Carolina. The deadline was August 22nd. RFK Jr. didn't notify them until five days later. And under state law, the election officials there have a clear leeway to then deny it. And the leeway is if it's at that point, like impractical to withdraw them from the ballot, then they don't have to withdraw them from the ballot. Certainly, the fact that the ballots were already printed, formatted in thousands of different ways, and already printed would seem like a justifiable impracticality to remove RFK Jr. from the ballot. North Carolina Supreme Court there said that that evidently wasn't practical is now forcing the election officials there to reprint all those ballots. Now, the problem is, is that there's other state laws. There's a state law that requires that the state send out ballots to service people living overseas by September 6th which they won't be able to comply with at this point. And there's federal law that also requires the deadline of like September 21st to send out those overseas ballot. So those state laws and federal law deadlines, they are going to be violating because, well, certainly the state law one, could they get it in time for the federal law? We don't know yet. So basically, the state Supreme Court, even though it was discretionary, it was certainly impractical because they already printed out these ballots. They are essentially forcing the election officials there to violate the state and federal laws with this delay. Because even if you were living in the state, you could have already started to vote because these mail-in ballots should have been sent to you. So you are also disenfranchising those residents, even those living in the state, from their right to early voting because of this delay in the reprinting of the ballots. A really extreme opinion there in, um, in North Carolina. So extreme that yes, the two liberal justices dissented, but even one of the conservative justices dissented saying, basically you are causing chaos by forcing them to reprint the ballots. And again, RFK Jr., he notified them five days after the deadline. And there was really no reason to do that because he withdrew from the race actually one day, August 23rd, one day after the deadline. But he took days, most likely he was talking to the Heritage Foundation or the people that be, right, about how to strategically help Trump in these specific states. If you notice, he only requested those three states, not everywhere. So maybe that's on you. If you're going to take time to um, strategize how best to help Trump and you end up five days after the deadline submitting your request, I think that should be on you, not the state of North Carolina. Not only are you disenfranchising the voters by um, not allowing them to have early voting, but you're also costing them millions, hundreds of thousands. What That cost hasn't been revealed, but that is expensive. It is expensive to reprint $3 million. The election officials, they already aren't really funded enough, um, like so many areas of government, to be able to oversee elections. And now you have asked the staff to, on top of that, completely change the formatting of the ballots and reprinting the ballots. And you are missing deadlines in state and federal law in which you have to have sent these ballots to overseas um, you know, military people who may not get their ballot in time to be able to vote. This is what this, the North Carolina Supreme Court is taking away. Literally, m people who are serving in our military abroad may not be able to vote because RFK Jr. decided to wait five days after the deadline to submit it. But the Heritage Foundation is really good with their judges. And these are elected officials who voted for in favor of RFK Jr. and against the rights of voters in North Carolina. And one of the uh, justices who wrote the dissent, one of the liberal justices who wrote this just dissent, Justice Riggs, is, is actually up for re-election herself. It's an eight-year term she's up for re-election for. She loses that election 
then the su state Supreme Court there will have um, only one liberal justice. Right now, there you have a five to two majority. Again, one of the conservatives ruled with the liberals, but otherwise, they will only have one liberal. So uh, voting matters there in North Carolina and matters for the um, presidential ticket, but also matters for that state Supreme Court who made it more difficult for voters to vote. And we know that a most or a lot of the early voting votes are Democrat because Democrats encourage their voters to vote as soon as possible. And Trump has so preached the conspiracy theories to his, his voters that they tend to vote on election day. Um, so the state Supreme Court knew what they were doing by infringing on the early voting people. And there you go. One of the seats on that court is also on the ballot. So they are also influencing not who becomes president, but who will they argue with in their next dissent. If they have even a bigger majority, they're going to be able to remake laws in North Carolina even more extreme. So a really extreme opinion coming out of North Carolina in an effort to reshape the presidential race and even to reshape their own court in North Carolina. Love this video? Make sure you stay up to date on the latest breaking news and all things Midas by signing up to the Midas Touch newsletter at MidasTouch.com newsletter.